ಅನ್ಸಿಕೆ ನಮೋ ನಮ ಗುಡ್ ಈವ್ನಿಂಗ್ ನಮೋ ನಮ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ಟು ಬಿ ಅಮೌಂಗ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಯು ಆಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈವ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬೀನ್ ಅ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಲರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ವೈಲ್ ಲಿಸನಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ದ ಇನ್ಸೈಟ್ಫುಲ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೆಕ್ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ಸ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಅವರ್ ದ ಪಾಸ್ಟ್ ಟು ವೀಕ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಐ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ದ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟೇಷನ್ ಐ ವುಡ್ ರಿಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಯು ಆಲ್ ಟು ಕ್ಲೋಸ್ ಯುವರ್ ಐಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಪಿಕ್ಚರ್ ದ ಫಾಲೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಪಿಕ್ಚರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇನ್ ಯುವರ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಯು ಕ್ರೇವ್ ಅ ಮೂಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಕ್ವೈಟ್ ಸೆರಿನಿಟಿ ಟು ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಯುವರ್ ಡೇ you settle down to meditate hoping to find some inner peace but exhaustion clings to you like a second skin your eyes flutter your breath slows then you jolt awake the blaring alarm clock screams at you an hour has vanished panic rises in your throat meditation forgotten you scramble to freshen up the day's demands a whirlwind in your mind the kids need a pep talk and a breakfast that fuels your exam cramming their exam cramming all while you throw together the lunch boxes a nervous tremor in your hands a notification on your phone mocks you a looming presentation or a high stakes meeting with the superiors while the kids miss their bus and waiting for them to be dropped at the school just when you think it can't get more chaotic reality throws another curve ball the maid a lifeline in this daily storm is nowhere to be found dishes pile up laundry overflows and the already mountainous to do list mocks you to top it all of surprise call saying guests are arriving that evening for an extended stay remember that special occasion you were meticulously planning a surprise party for a beloved family member it becomes just another burden to juggle weeks blur together in this relentless dance exercise becomes a distant memory replaced by late night scrambling to finish staff dinner running behind schedule and sleep is the luxury you barely dare to dream of each morning a battle dragging yourself out of bed and face the never ending challenge that is your day fueling the situation are thoughts like i am going to mess this up for sure or this is all my fault i should have been better prepared relax relax gently open your eyes yes the topic i have chosen for today is stress and yogic approach to elevate stress during my uh, ma dissertation program i happened to conduct an online survey with respect to digestive health in children and adults which opened my eyes to the prevalence of stress this motivated me to take and create a plan something to elevate stress so these were the results of which i got the 72 uh, responses 59 responded to this particular question and this was the results there where the stress was the main symptom out of all the symptoms which was being experienced with respect to digestive health this was the survey conducted but the prevalent symptom was stress so i was thinking of doing something in this line uh, to in in the yogi way so in the next coming few minutes we'll be understanding what causes stress what are the stressor and how to overcome stress we'll first see in brief the uh, anatomy and physiology of stress and then we'll see the yogic anatomy and physiology and ways to cope up with stress before that just give a thought imagine a world with less stress what would one aspect of our life look like right so let's begin stress stress is usually a problem related to the present it is the there is a mismatch between the uh, the mental thought processes the state of mind and the environment around so when such conflict arises uh, in the mind we call it as stress there is uh, the feeling of it can be said that stress is a natural response to a challenging situation it is either triggered by the external factors or the internal factors like the negative self talk 
unrealistic expectation. Just imagine there is a rubber band. You're holding it with both the uh, at both the edges and stretch it to some extent, right? To some extent, it is easily stretchable. Over the period, beyond the limit, you would feel the vibration in the rubber band as well as in your hands. So also, if a person is stretching beyond his limitations, that is when he experiences what we all say as stress, right? This six little word has been enough emphasized in the past uh, presentations, almost all of the presentations we have seen, right? So this would be a just like a recap of all those things in the next few minutes. So this is what is called as stress, uh, which is not only felt by the person who is experiencing, but it also impacts the people around. So to understand stress, it can be broadly classified into two types, the e-stress and the distress, right? So, for example, under, we'll like take a situation of a child who is uh, going for a, uh, admission into a university or a college, right? So, he is preparing well for his exam, um, this NSET or this uh, admission test and all. So, during that moment, he might have to spend so many sleepless nights preserving. But if that situation is causing him stress to achieve something good which is keeping him in a state of excitement enthusiasm that is a positive stress e stress little bit of that is really good for us to achieve our goals and tasks but if the same situation is causing a person to feel demoralized overwhelmed or sad that is called distress if that distress continues to a period certain period of time continuously being expressed then we might term it as chronic stress so it is actually, I, we may understand this, that stress is something good if it is in a state which we are, if it is within our limit. But if it is beyond limit and it is continuously being experienced, that is what we are going to address as stress in the coming few minutes, right? So that is what we are uh, concerned about. So chronic stress is something which is very devastating to the brain. Mainly the two regions of the brain that gets affected due to chronic stress, namely the prefrontal lobe of the brain and the hippocampus as shown in the uh, picture. So during a chronic stress, what happens is the prefrontal part of the brain gets impacted, which is the region for us to uh, plan, uh, aim for certain goals in life, decide, organize our schedule and Think what is right and what is wrong, and to have complete focus on the task in hand. And also, it impacts the hippocampus, which is the core for the memory region and focus. So, if these two things are getting affected, that is when we might call it as a chronic stress. It's also observed that chronic stress impairs the neural connections in the brain. Over a period of time, these neural connections shrink in the brain and that is when a person feels low. So uh, there are, uh, other than chronic, uh, in, the, in this chronic stress, there are uh, one more thing we might call it as a post-traumatic stress of various types of stress, post-traumatic stress. For example, there are quite a few situations, but in a situation wherein I am, I would, I would give an example of that. We were being in Nairobi in the year 2012, wherein that we were just new to that place and we were just uh, 200 meters away from a place, a mall, west side, where terrorists have attacked that place. We could, uh, we were, the, I was there, I could hear the gunshots and all, but imagine the people inside the mall who have been trapped the person's uh, emotions, uh, the feelings, and the amount of stress they would have felt. And if that person is not overcoming that feeling, and even after the situation has passed and he has survived that situation, if it is bothering him even after six months, exactly the same way he has experienced then, that is called post-traumatic stress. And there are various other kinds of stress like uh, uh, if any trauma or health issues, constant body uh, under uh, some or the other diseases might cause people stress or prenatal stress. Or these are some of the various types of stress that are prevalent. But mainly we are concentrating on the chronic stress or uh, distress. Uh, and so 
to understand stress, we might understand uh, through three points, stressor, sensory impulses, and the functioning of these hormones and how to overcome stress. What are stressors? To know what is causing stress is of vital importance. So first we have to understand what is causing the stress. The stressors could be anything related to work pressure, right? If there is a person changing from one company to another, that could be a stressor because he has to set up to this new environment or even changing from one house to another. It's quite tedious, right? Everything has to be settled, the school, the work, the uh, bill, uh, gas connection, everything. Like we can understand these things. So these life changes or some financial crisis, relationship issues, health concerns, like we have said earlier, these all are could be some of the stressors. It varies from person to person. Then the sensor impulses. So if we take a pin and point, poke our skin, we would immediately feel the impulses. How does the brain know, right? It's quick. The impulses are carried to it. But in stress, it is even more quicker. So what happens during a stress? When a stressor, any stressor has been faced by the person, the impulses are quite quick and it activates the uh, system, uh, the, the following systems of the brain. What happens when an impulse of stress comes? The, uh, the brain receives the same impulses and the hypothalamus releases the corticotropic hormone. This corticotropic hormone in turn suggests the pituitary gland which releases, it is the, uh, which releases uh, uh, hormones for various organs release the adrenocorticotropic hormone suggesting the adrenal gland to release cortisol. So this is a natural process in any fight or flight situation for our body. This is required. Like we, for an example, day converges in, merges into night. Summer merges into winter. So also parasympathetic and the sympathetic both come into action at some moment of the other. But the problem is if it is continuous, that sympathetic nervous system which has been activated continues uh, for a prolonged period of time is a problem. So when this cortisol is released into the blood, it uh, it is which is responsible for regulating the metabolism, immune system and blood pressure is essential functions of the body. But during stress, this cortisol flows the function of the non-essential or harmful during a flight or flight situation because the energy is concentrated in the uh, protecting the body. The body constantly strives to protect us. So it takes the energy from the rest or rest and digestive systems like this because the flight and flight situation is in action. So rest and digest system is halted. So the digestion, the reproductive system and the growth process are stopped. So this complex natural alarm system communicates with the brain region, which is also uh, the center for mood and motivation, which gets affected. So a little bit of uh, uh, these hormones are required, but it is harmful if the chronic stress continues to persist, which gives a negative impact on our mental and health. So now that the sympathetic nervous system has been activated, let's understand what are the physical, physiological uh, things happening in the body. So during a stress, we have seen that there was a stressor that has uh, sent the impulses to the brain. The brain has released the hormones. Now, what does these hormones release in the bloodstream does? These hormones increase the heart rate to give energy for the person to prepare for action, the flight or flight action, that thereby increasing the, the flow of blood towards the muscles, the vital organs. Secondly, this, there is a mental tension because you need to take action, the muscles tense. But the problem is that tensed muscles continue to stay tense, cause uh, muscle tension and discomfort more so in the neck and shoulder. Secondly, because of pumping of blood constantly, the respiration changes. Because of the energy being taken away from the digestion system, digestion is suppressed and the immunity function as well. So, and is this the center of emotions and uh, fear and if, uh, memory, right? So, the sleep gets disturbed, mood changing is observed, mood changes are observed, and there is a chronic risk. Also, whenever a person has slightly 
um, any uh, health issue or a weaker system in his uh, body, any disease as such, and even in stress, that particular system gets affected is what is observed, right? So, we might get problems related to that particular system, which is already prevalent in their body, which is a weaker as such. So, understanding stress and the stressors would help us to take action in rest. Like a said, stress is caused by being here but wanting to be there. So, we have harmony the harmony between the body and the mind through yogic way let's understand so we have seen the anatomy of stress let's understand the yogic anatomy uh, to understand we have seen the we are we know this chetur views of yoga darshan right hey hey to hana hano paya if we want to understand stress in the yogic terminology i found i mean uh uh, we can say that heya is the suffering, right? So here the suffering is stress. In stress, the mind is agitated, disturbed. So the state of mind can be related to kshipta, which is rajogun pradhan. So we, the hey hetu, what is the stressor causing? We know avidya is the root cause of all the klesha, of which if we may consider asmita, here the internal negative talk, which is related to the mind, right? So the self-talk, the negative self-talk could be one of the reasons that is causing stress in the yogic terminology. So Hana, what is the one we are aiming for? Peaceful state of mind, right? So what is the Hanopaya? There are many ways Swetch Patanjali has given us of which uh, we would be under start. For beginners, it's Ashtanga Yoga. He has even uh, prescribed the practice of Tapas, Swadhyay, Ishwara, Pranidana, and Kriya Yoga as well, and Abhyas and Vaidag, which are the higher level of practices. But to understand, like a person in a stressful state, it would be difficult to right away start with Abhyas and Vaidag. So let's understand through first Ashtanga Yoga. So in Ashtanga Yoga, there are uh, uh, eight limbs of yoga, right? But we will start first understanding through Asana practice. Which, for example, you can take any asana of your choice or the example I've been sharing here, Sashanka asana. While you prepare yourself for the asana, for example, you are taking your posture of uh, Vajrasana and as you inhale, you raise your arms up, right? So as you inhale your brain, you raise your arms up, you observe the stretch of your ribcage, hands towards stretch straightly, elbows to the ears, towards the side of the ear. So when you bring this awareness over your body, you have to be in the present moment, right? And next, you will be observing the incoming and the outgoing breath. As you raise the breath, as you breathe in, observe the breath. And as you exhale, observe. There is a experience of this awareness of the breath. Then as you bend forward and exhale down, pranayama as as that you are doing this pranayama practice, right? You are exhaling and going down. As you go down, observe the flow of blood towards the crown region. Observe as you bend forward the moment from the waist you are bending forward the spine erect. See every moment of your body one after the other with full awareness. So after you go down, you, you slowly stay in the posture. You observe the calming down of the breath, right? So... With this observance of the breath, if you are able to, if in any asana, if it requires for you to look at the particular, like in uh, uh, well, this Virabhadrasana, we, we focus at the fingertip, right? So you are focusing at a particular spot. Otherwise, in this Sashankasana, you might even close your eyes. So you are either dharana, but pointing at a particular point in that particular asana, or in this asana like Sashankasana, if you're closing your eyes, you're tuning in within. So pratyahar is happening here, right? So you observe the internal sensations and the breath within the flow of the blood, internally what is happening, pratyahara. 
And if you are able to stay in that posture for a prolonged period of time, definitely you would experience a, a dharana happening on the breath and slowly towards dhyana. So even one single asana has the impact of all the ashtanga if done with full awareness. Finally, uh, in, during my pre earlier stage when I was learning yoga, ma'am used to ask me, like, uh, I, some from, from nowhere a thought arises, if you would have, you can correlate if you also experience the same thing. So, or some people yawn continuously or some people used to even when I used to take classes some ma'am I feel a little itching in here and there now and now I'm feeling yawning so my ma'am said that it could be that the cleaning is happening at the internal uh, level and that is bringing out this thought which is going away from your body so you are really so even such happens at a subtler level by practicing with full awareness, just one answer. Whatever we are practicing, yoga has that uh, potential for us to cleanse from within. Coming to uh, practices like Swadhyay or Ishwara Pranidha, we may say that Ishwara, we have seen in detail, very beautifully explained by our beloved friend about the Bhakti Yoga. So Ishwara Pranidha, like a child completely trusts her mother or father, so also we with full uh, devotion surrender our whatever present problem at thy lotus feet we can stay rest assured that at least we will stay at peace of mind and then when we proceed to our task we will have that courage focus and we will definitely deliver it best so Ishwar Pranidhan is one way as suggested by Tej Patanjali would give us a present state of mind and Abhyas Vaira, higher level of practices. Uh, it is said that how do we know we are progressing in our sadhana, right? right? So if there is any situation that is causing us disturbance or agitation, like the person we are seeing in the beginning of the uh, uh, session. So if, you are a, if we are able to get back to state of equilibrium quickly, or how much time are we taking to get back to that state of present moment besides whether our sadhana is going ahead or we are still need to work on ourselves. So this helped me to analyze myself more. So just wanted to share that. So uh, now understanding the uh, overview of what this uh, uh, stress is about in a yogic terminology, let's understand what's happening internally. In Taitri Upanishad, it's uh, it's explained the five levels of our existence, uh, namely the Panchakosha theory. So, uh, starting from Annamaya, the elemental body, which it is made up of the five main elements. Next comes the uh, Pranamaya Kosha, the energy body, which comprises of the Chakra, Nadi, Prana, Upaprana, and the Manumaya Kosha, the emotional body, wherein one experiences a uh, experiences are given to the oneself and these experiences in turn send impulse to the Vijnanamai Kosha for the release of her which impacts the functioning of this Vijnanamai Kosha and finally the executive the causal body wherein the genetic imprints are stored the Vasanas are imprint as right so this is the Anandamai Kosha now we will be concentrating the uh, Healing can happen either from Annamaya towards Anandamaya or from Anandamaya towards Annamaya. But depending upon, for example, in this situation of stress, the person to start higher level of practice like Abhyas and Vaira would be a bit difficult, right? So we can uh, understand, we will be going from grosser towards subtle than subtle towards the, in any ailment wherein the person's state of mind is good, but he is physically having some problem. Maybe we can come from Anandamaya Kosha to Anandamaya Kosha. But here we will be, uh, It's uh, it would be ideal if we go from grosser towards subtle. So how do we bring about this harmony between the psycho and the soma, psychosomatic harmony? Because breath being the connection between the, I'm sorry, uh, uh, this this pranamay kosha is the bridge between the anumaya and the manumaya and it is quite difficult to directly access the subtle body even the subtle more than the pranamaya and breath is something we have uh, direct access so we will try to control the breath and thereby bring about the harmony in the mind and there will as well in the body so in this, there was a research conducted 
uh, and in that i would mainly emphasize the results of the research uh, based on this type 3 upanishad the levels of existence they have conducted research and the research results have proved that the uncontrolled rumination or the stress is the major cause of various psychosomatic ailment and the mind management is more essential than fighting the external forces and this perceptive cognition is something related uh, what does it mean like it is a person like we are in the example you have seen if a person has undergone any traumatic situation or if he is constantly thinking about something which might which is not yet happened or something in the future or that of the events of the past if that is bothering and is creating stress in the present moment that is called perseverative cognition so it has found that this mind management is more essential than fi fighting the external causes so how do we and also another uh, study has shown, shown that and uh, the impact of a thought attachment towards a thought like bhagwan shri krishna in bhagavad gita has said that dhyayato vishyan tumtaha sangaste shupa jayate sangat samjayate kamaha kamat krodo bhijayate krodat bhavati sammohaha sammoha smuti vibhramaha smuti bhramsat buddhi nashaha buddhi nashat pranashyati that is dhyayato vishyan tumtaha if a person is attached to a particular thought like for example in the we'll go back to the same example if the if the person wants to achieve some goal and there are so many uh, mundane tasks uh, waiting for that person that individual to be attended she wants to uh, do all those things efficiently but that constant thought she is not able to do but she wants to do brings about uh, dhyayato vishan tumta sangaste shupa jayate that desire and attachment towards that thought if it is fulfilled she will be happy that person will be happy if it is not being fulfilled it might cause some emotions in the body if it is happy it's fine if it is not fulfilled it might lead towards anger krodha bhavati sammoha sammoha smuti vibhramaha so when this emotions arise the person leads the impulses sent by the vijnana mein kosha might not be perceived correctly so it might loss in that situation of samoha it might not guide it will not be guided properly by the buddhi and due to the lack of control over impulses one loses lack of awareness and discrimination so the hippocampus i have seen that gets affected prefrontal cortex so during this stress the manomaya kosha is afflicted because of the emotions and the body follows the disturbances completely and we know that when the mind is disturbed uh, agitated the uh, the emotions that disturb the prana as well if there is free flow of prana anywhere disease cannot be there health is bound to be but disease arise when there is any obstruction in the flow of prana so when this prana gets vibrated disturbed it's when the downfall of the person in that as per that particular shloka or in this stress and stress related the imbalance of the prana crosses stress reaction triggered by the brain spreads all over the body causing disease so what is the way out let's understand along the, in the with respect to the panchakosha so the hanopaya that we were going to discuss is and we will come with respect to each kosha so annamaya kosha diet and asanas are mainly i have chosen these two parts diet so we have beautifully understood the concept of uh, prakruti uh, what are the body types and all so as per ayurveda so knowing one's constituent uh, will definitely help us to choose the proper diet and based on that along with that because the kshita state of mind is rajogun pradan we want to bring it to a calm state of mind the satvagun pradan so for that we will choose the food that are suitable for us and that are satvik in nature and the respect to asana required means to achieve certain goals and tasks but if it is that stress leading to chronic is what we need to attend so what asanas we can do asana to if there is constant flow of the hormones in the body that is which is causing in the imbalance so you need to use that hormone the energy given by the body 
through practicing asanas would definitely help you to utilize the extra hormones in the body and keep yourself active so yoga and asanas also bring about a balance in the digestive health yoga we know that the muscles of the digestive health are smooth muscles they get easily affected by the emotions and all so practicing yoga calming down the mind will bring back the harmony in the body next we'll understand about the anamaya pranamaya kosha the pranamaya kosha the energy body the energy which is responsible for various functions within the body even we are seeing through the eyes it is only the organs that eyes are but the energy behind that eyes we are through which we are perceiving is the energy which we are gaining through the pranamaya pranic body so how do we bring about the balance in the pranamaya because the sympathetic nervous system is in action we want to bring back the harmony and we want to balance the sympathetic and the parasympathetic for which anlom vilom is best we again mention nadi shodan because uh, people might have various ailments like kumbhak which may not be prescribed so just normal anlom vilom practice without kumbhak uh, it would be helpful and brahmari a soothing practice pranayama and various other practices can be guide, uh, done under guidance mudra prana mudra and gnana mudra specifically chosen gnana mudra when the uh, this finger starts it balances the uh, uh, vital air in the body and enables one to concentrate better so these are the main pra, mudras have chosen for this thing. when the pranayama if one continues pranayama for a particular period of time even in hatha yoga pradipika or all the yogic texts we are seeing that and even sage patanjali says dharana ki yogyata manasaha the mind is become stable and is now suitable for dharana so practicing pranayama along with asanas and the diet would definitely bring about the required changes in the body to bring about the balance and mainly pranayama because we have seen that the prefrontal cortex of the brain is impaired and the limbic where the flight or flight or the primitive brain is come into action which does not help a person to think but pranayama brings us to the present it activates this prefrontal cortex of the brain and a person is now enabled to respond rather than react which is what we are aiming for finally this manomaya kosha the emotional body right so the instability of the manomaya kosha is caused due to the deviation from the right path and leading to sorrow so how do we bring about like the bhakti yoga we have seen the mantra chanting mantra japa or uh, om chanting all this uh, mantra ucharana does bring about balance in the manomaya kosha because the mind is focused the sense organs are focused on the ob object of this chanting right so this definitely helps about manana trayate mantra that helps one to come out then this manomaya kosha based upon the emotions experienced the vijnanamaya kosha sends the impulses right so this one being balanced the vijnanamaya kosha which plays role in this hormones and then secretion and all really because that really that impulses suggest the release of these hormones and enzymes which are released directly into the pranamaya kosha uh, pranamaya kosha at the energy vortex at the chakras if we observe that all the uh endocrine glands are just placed at each of the chakras right so also practicing dhyana yoga nidra suggesting positive suggestions through yoga nidra would definitely help a person in stress to calm down and become positive right so this brings about the balance at the inner level and hananda mai kosha we can practice dhyana once slowly over practicing over a period of time once if we practice Uh, dhyana on the mula dhara dhyana or the vishuddhi because of the imbalance uh, the metabolism is disturbed the digestion is impaired or the thought process is not disturbed is disturbed so by dhyana on the mula dhara or vishuddhi agni chakra would definitely help one to bring about this balance so this is a same just a uh, basic idea of the therapeutic Uh, way of addressing stress and the diet like i said uh, these are the sattvic diets one should choose and avoid the rajasic and the tamasic 
over a period of time practicing these practices one definitely would state reach a state of mind from shipta to vikshipta and slowly ekagra right so let's aim for that and this is the significance of embracing the yogic lifestyle like we have seen uh, in various uh, with respect to uh, kaitri upanishad with, with respect to various levels of existence we have seen how yoga helps us to overcome a chronic stressful situation so yoga has the ability to reduce stress by bringing about the body's response relaxation relaxation response and bringing about this normalcy of the psycho neuro immuno endocrine axis that is that the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis and this practicing yoga along with the balanced diet helps to contract the free radicals and nourish the body because the digestion is bring back to normal situation the nutrients are well absorbed and the body feels good and it in integrating the body movement along with the breath brings about the psychosomatic harmony so i i quote when the mind is quiet the intellect becomes sharper the emotions become positive and lighter and our behavior becomes much more palatable psychosomatic disorders like stress anxiety can be treated through yogic regime and it's like nishka uh, means do not uh, wait for the result but just doing our best would give a sense of peace and ease within also by practicing with this kind of thought process of not a, uh, not that uh, keeping the only being result oriented we we will be able to focus better on the task in hand and thereby if we are completely focused on particular task we are bound to get results as per our strength and stamina right so the positive transformation strength wisdom is definitely possible through yoga abhyas heyam dukha managatam like sage patanjali says so when we are practice when we are practicing all these practices diligently day in and day out in any situation we will be able to uh, withstand with confidence and strength and enthusiasm and we will thereby avoid all this chronic stress or the situations like blood pressure or diabetes or lifestyle disorder heyam dukha managatam so this is all about the yogic anatomy physiology of stress and solutions through yogi quip and these are the certain uh, research articles which relate to stress and finally man eva manushyanam karanam bandha mokshayo bandhaya vishyasaktam muktir nirvishyam smritam as the mind so the man bondage or liberation are in our own mind i would request you all just two minutes let's chant omkar uh, if you can take gnana uh, uh, mudra and close your eyes and before chanting uh, i would just brief in the procedure like which you would all be knowing but just like in case uh, we will be chanting akar ukar and makar uh, with respect to the time i will just do it each one once okay so while we are chanting akar we'll keep our awareness at the navel region while we chanting ukar we'll keep our awareness at the chest region and while chanting makar we'll keep our awareness about the throat region the thing we are going to do is in the first round we will be chanting it aloud in the second round we will be chanting it a bit low and the final round we will be chanting it internally but throughout the process you observe the vibrations in the body and the similar vibrations we will be able to feel even if we are chanting it low or internally so let's focus on the sensations within the body as we chant okay yeah the spine is right hands in gnana mudra eyes closed take a deep breath in Ah uh... Oh Mm Omkar, eyebrow center awareness. Ah. 
second round slightly lower volume but with the awareness of the respective region akar internally akar the breathing internally akar the deep breath in makar Inhale, Omkar internally. Relax. And clear up your eyes and open your relax. And if I am allowed, I would like to know because having this opportunity and so 